Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. I am reading from Pastor Benjamin Faircloth. He got a word from God toward the end of this month, and God spoke to him. And I'm reading because this is a serious warning. And he asked him if it was going to be globally or if it was for this country, and God said globally. So listen. A September of Sorrows is the name of this word. Not a happy thing to hear. Starting tomorrow. Hmm. Hopefully not to way into the month so we have time to prepare. Son of man, speak to the four corners of your nation and declare to my backslidden sheep. I have an issue with their sin. I hear the sound of violence. I hear the sound of tumult and turmoil. I hear the sound of destruction. I hear the sound of distress. The inhabitants of the earth have no fear of my name. The people of my planet still mock my son and scorn his cross. I have waited for the sound of praise to spring forth from the earth. I have endured the seasons of sin till now. I will arise and I will release the floods of your enemies. They will come out of the secret and dark places like scorpions from their hidden places. They will strike. Vengeance is mine and I will repay those who mock my name, my salvation, and my tolerance of grace. I am not as you, O man of dust. I am above and you are beneath. You travail for nothing. Without me you labor for false gain, but I will prevail over the works of your hands. I will arise and reveal to the nations that I am Great sorrow is prescribed for this month of September. I will be a, it will be a month and a time to remember that I am. For calamity will strike the heart of man and great fear will be released in the land. Yet I will remain as I am. My arms will be open to those who will turn towards me. My arm is not too short and my eyes are not blind that I cannot see those who truly embrace me. What will you do in your day of calamity? What will, or where will you go in the time of distress? Wow. Anyway, he goes on to say, this is the pastor's words, he hopes that what has gone on so far in America has shaken us to our core. The loss of military through unexplained accidents here and globally, civil unrest, racism, op- you know, the dope, the whole thing. He goes on and on dealing with the, the, the threats of war from China, Iran, Russia, a Hurricane Harvey breaking forth. Um, you know, he's hoping that this opens our eyes. But see, this is me. This Pat's two cents. I seriously doubt that this will do any more. Whatever happens will do any more than cause us to shed a few tears. Work on the the uh, the areas of of damage and still ignore God. I mean, we might, just like we did for 9-11, you know, give them a few tips, you know, how we do at a restaurant, you know, give them a few dollars here or there. That's about the value of our prayers. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Uh, uh, What's playing tonight? Okay, uh, let me know. I want to catch that. It's really sad what's happening in Texas, huh? Yeah, I know. Lord, have mercy. Those poor, poor people. Uh, 
uh, did you give the twenty dollars? That okay, good. So what's on TV? Blind, deaf, dull, indifferent, faithless, in some cases belligerent towards the ways of God, and God is all the love we ever needed, and we bite the hand that loves us. I don't quite think that, no, I really don't think, I think no matter what happens, there's going to be a majority that has a whatever, just like when your parents scold you, blah, 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 whatever. Well, that's the way we are about God, whatever. And that's where, that's why we're in such dangerous uh, you know, we're on dangerous ground. We really are. We're on borrowed time. And the sad part is the good are going to be caught up with the mess of those that could care less about God. So that's why we need to really pray. And now, I believe that in some cases, some things are allowed that thrust some born-again Christians into the mix of people who could care less because it is those people's last chance and the people that are allowed to go through have enough grace and enough faith to still be a witness for God. So even though they suffer hardship, they're being used by God in the hardship. Even in God's judgment, there's mercy. And see, you know, we don't get that. Okay, let me uh, go on and see what else he says. Uh, let's see. Okay. Some people are in denial. I agree with that. He didn't say that. I'm just putting it in my own words. Um, the former and latter rain are coming. Hosea chapter 6 verse 3. Joel chapter 2 verse 23. Haggai chapter 2 verses, verse 9. Now, this is the last harvest. Okay. So, those of us who are trying to live for God. We need to keep our eyes open, our ears open, and our mouths open for God's sake, for their soul's sake, okay? We also need to prepare. This is Pat's Two Cents talking again. We also need to prepare. We need to, he even mentioned some people who can afford to buy little rubber boats or rowboats or whatever in case your streets become rivers. You just never know what's coming. For myself, I am getting one of those big 55-gallon things of water for storage. So, and I have my big Berkey. So all I have to do is fill that up and pour it into the all the goodies into the barrel until the barrel's filled up. And my barrel will be filled with filtered, already filtered and cleansed water. So... That is a just in case they say, oh, the water main's been shut off. We've had a problem or there's been a bomb or whatever. So I want to know that there's at least some water there. And then my faith will kick in if the water runs out before the water gets released. Lord, you brought water out of a rock before, do it again. We have to believe in what the Bible says in order to have enough faith to pull from the miracles that there will be miracles in great tragedy God shows up in a very big way especially to those who believe God bless you in these last days I would that we would all escape all of this trauma all of this crisis but let me tell you we're not